So The Wall is a psychological thriller that follows two soldiers pinned down by an Iraqi sniper. What made you want to tell this story specifically? Well, it was a script I had read that was on uh, something called The Blacklist, mm -hmm. which is uh, a group that picks the best unproduced scripts every year, and, and uh, The Wall had, had been picked as, as like best script of the year, and so it sort of was on my radar, and I read it really as a writing sample, because I'd heard the writer was amazing, Dwayne Worrell, and then I fell in love with the script itself, and I was like, well, who's directing this movie? I want to make this one, and there was no director attached to it, and that was sort of the origin of, of my involvement with it. But it started with a, a, just a writer. Uh, Dwayne won this contest that Amazon was holding for like you know best you know screenplay of the year, and he was living in China at the time, and okay. just penned this incredible script. I, I think ultimately it was the it was the major challenge of uh, of this kind of filmmaking. And uh, when I knew it was Doug directing, it was the right filmmaker and a person for this vision that I, uh, I, I wanted to pounce on it. In fact, I did more than pounce on yeah. it. I ended up stalking him uh, until, I could, uh, until he had no choice but to offer me the job. <laughs> he literally shut up in my office in New York and was like, You're, you don't need to look any further. Um, I'm the guy. I'm your soldier. When you know when it's good, it's, it's, you know, things, uh, it's worth fighting for, you know, so that's what I did. You know, filmmakers all the time talk about, you know, film being like going into war, yeah. but you know, making the wall, Aaron and I both had a lot of exposure to uh, the people who really do go to war. And, um, and you know, as hard as making a movie is, uh, it pales in comparison to what soldiers deal with every day. And, no, and no. we tried to bring a little bit of that to the screen. Aaron, how did you go about researching your character? Uh, there was many uh, people I got in contact with, with ex-Marines and war vets and um, and we had a great consultant on, on set, Nick Irving. He's also known as the Reaper, um, who's with us every single day. He, um, he earned that title, the Reaper. I mean, he killed like 30 people as a sniper his first tour of duty. The other place I went to was one of the top sniper schools in, in the country, uh, in Fort Chaffee in Arkansas. I spent four days on the base with those guys. Uh, and it was, it was great fun. We got out on the shooting range and, and uh, shot in the day, shot in the night. and. Um, yeah, just tried to bring home some of that um, natural uh, banter and their mannerisms and, and, and try and make I mean, it Aaron really became, possible. yeah, I mean, authentic is a good word. I mean, Aaron, because of his exposure, to spent so much time with these very soldiers. And, and it was amazing how many people in the military, both uh, current soldiers, veterans, Gold Star wives, participated and helped us with the, the telling of the story and, and the reality of telling, you know, it's... You know, Aaron's character in the movie is like a superhero in terms mm -hmm. of what he goes through right. and, and how, he, how he perseveres um, and the sort of resourcefulness and just the amount of stuff a, a modern American soldier brings into the field. He's like Iron Man in terms of all the different pouches and things he can produce and keep going. But, you know, that's based on, on real soldiers and what, what real soldiers go through. And, and you know, we, we think of the military as, as really having partnered with us in the making of this film. They could not have had a, a better proxy than Aaron, who was just so committed to, to getting it right, to every detail. Like the, the crotch of his pants in the movie has its own story. You hear a lot of stories from the military guys and uh, what agitated them or frustrated them about certain movies is that they never got the detail right about their costumes and, you know, this patch in the wrong place, this, you know, for, for example, the pants, the crutch would always blow out, you know, these, you know, so most of the time, you know, they've, they've got patches all over the place. But to be honest, the first day of shooting, the, the, the crutch blew out and uh, the costume person wanted to stitch it up. And he said, you know, you can't, you just got to, got to leave it. Really quickly, <laughs> working with WWE star John Cena, what was that like for you, Aaron? He's a fantastic guy and got a brilliant work ethic, um, very professional and, mm -hmm. um, I mean, we had him all of four days, I think, uh, and he'd be flying from Chicago or flying in from Tokyo at early hours of the morning. Hosting the ESPYs at the same time. And wow. I've never met someone who, who works as uh, full on and as hard as him, and um, yeah, he's great. Doug, in the past you've said, when I finish a movie, the movies I choose to do after it are guided by the experience I had on the previous movie. You mentioned Mr. and Mrs. Smith being a reaction to the Bourne identity. What will your next project be in reaction to this one? The Wall is sort of a payoff to something I started working on on Bourne Identity of like creating tension and drama and suspense and with the details. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I probably can't go any further in terms of The Wall. I feel like 
what I started doing on Born Identity, I've, I've now achieved with the wall. So I got to go in a different trajectory. Well, thank you so much for being here, gentlemen. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.